I'm a little different. How are you all doing? My name is John Campbell. This is Gospel According to John Campbell. And today we are going to be talking a little bit about the power of praise and thanksgiving. And with that said, um, I'd like to start off with a prayer, uh, just giving thanks, praising, because I believe this is a topic that will help quite a number of people. If you're new to this, this uh, channel, my name is John Campbell. Um, this is a live stream podcast that I've started called Gospel According to John Campbell. And you can follow the strolling link there. You can see uh, at Gospel According to John uh, Campbell at the link there to at YouTube. And my prayer is that this is a stream that's going to help believers with understanding, knowledge and understanding to grow in their relationship with Jesus Christ, to grow in their effectiveness in the kingdom of God. And I am striving to be led by the Holy Spirit into the work that our Father is leading me to do. And I pray is that you, through the unction of the Holy Spirit, are drawing understanding, insight, and wisdom that God will lead you into the work he's to do. We trust in the Lord with all our heart, and we lean not on our own understanding, but in all our ways, we acknowledge him, and he will indeed direct our paths. So with that said, uh, let's say a prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you so much. I'm so grateful and thankful that you have set this exact time that I can share this word and that people can uh, draw in those who desire to hear your word. Father, I know that you are in control of all things. I know you are faithful and that you keep every word that comes out of your mouth and nothing returns void. I'm thankful that you've revealed Jesus Christ to me and to the brothers and sisters who will chime in on this stream. I'm thankful that you are move us inside us at the appointed time that we would we would desire to see beyond the veil of this earth and to see that you are our creator and that you've sent salvation in Jesus name. And so we worship you, Father. We praise you for you deserve all glory and you deserve all praise. And with that said, Father, I pray I, I come before you and, and, and desire to see your name exalted during the stream. I desire to see the name of Jesus Christ exalted, your salvation. I pray that you would move through me and I would be unctioned by the Holy Spirit that you've given, that I might be able to impart what you have given me to say and to do. And then, Father, that you would give to those who are brought here by your appointed time, not by accident, but by your, by your hand, that you'd bring them into an understanding, into an ability to hear your word, and that word to bear fruit, fruit that would last. I pray that this understanding we have shall help us and equip your people, that we may have victory over the devil. For we know it is not by might, nor by power, but by your spirit, my Father, that we overcome. So I pray you bless this time. Bring your Holy Spirit amongst us. You said where two or three are gathered, you are there. Bring your Holy Spirit amongst us, that, Father, we would hear your word and that we would reverence your word. And I pray as well that you would remove all distractions, all anything that offends in the name of Jesus Christ, that we would walk and operate in your grace. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All righty. Well, that being said, let me just, I just need one moment. You know, you got to love a live stream because I could hear that fan in the background. And um, and now I don't. So the power of praise and thanksgiving. 
And that's what I like to talk about. You know, the Bible does say in Hosea chapter 4, verse 6, that God's people, his people like you and I, like the brothers and sisters we know in church, God's people perish for a lack of knowledge. We don't perish because of good intentions. Many of us have great intentions, but we perish for a lack of knowledge. And thanksgiving and prayer, thanksgiving and praise is an area where I believe that we see benefits, but we lack the understanding. I know I did. I myself am a professional musician. I have uh, I've been a worship leader in, in churches for many years. Many years I've done that in the past. And I have, even in my studies now, I realize I didn't completely understand the difference between performance and praise. The difference between, and the importance of thanksgiving, the importance of praise and worship in the work of the kingdom of God and the defeat of spiritual uh, forces of evil standing against God's kingdom. I, I didn't quite understand. I'm not saying I was completely ignorant, but, you know, with greater understanding comes greater capacity to obey, to walk in truth, and to, to ultimately reap a reward that honors our Father. So let's talk about praise. You know, interesting enough, when we, you know, I, I, well, let's set the stage. When you are going to church and praise and worship begins, and sometimes you just hear a song and it's so anointed. You, 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 your worship, you hear the worship and it moves something in you. As, they, as someone declares the praises of God, even worship or in prayer publicly, and, 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 and you hear that God is exalted, his name is worthy, that there's none like him, there's no a power and authority greater than Jesus, that worthy is the Lamb. Amazing is the grace. When we, we hear that, we can feel something changing, not just, not just out there, but in us. As believers, when we, hear the, when we hear the praises of our God, something changes in us. As believers, when we give thanks and we're in a state of gratitude, something changes in us. The, the problem in the world today is that people are walking by a wrong spirit and being defeated. And God's, our Father's desire has always been that mankind operating in his image would have dominion on the earth. In Genesis chapter 1, he said, let us make man in our image and likeness and let them have dominion over the earth. And so Adam was in the image was in the image of of God but Adam fell Adam sinned and we now became the children of men in the image of man not the image of God Jesus Yahweh's salvation or Yeshua he lived the life and paid the penalty for our sins and he being the first fruit we now are able to share in his death and resurrection when we were repent and are baptized galatians chapter 3 verse 26 says for all who have been baptized into christ are clothed in christ there's no male no female jew nor gentle slave no free that they're all abraham's descendants by faith and therefore heirs according to the promise, that now we can walk in the image of God, the likeness, and have dominion, not just in the flesh, but in the spirit realm here on earth. And this is the victory we have in Jesus, that the spirit we receive now will last far beyond this life. And that spirit within us it cries, Abba, Father. How? Through thanksgiving, through praise. It's a very important, as we look on, we'll see that praise is how God intervenes in this realm. That through our faith expressed in praise, through our faith expressed in thanksgiving, we then give permission for God to step in and move in our lives. Well, let's take a look. Psalm chapter 22, verse 3. But thou art holy, 
O thou art, O that thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. So, in Psalm 22, the psalmist is writing, David's right. O God, you are holy. You inhabit the praises of your people, Israel. That God inhabits the praise. See, when we praise, for we are now people called by God's name, because we're baptized in the name of Jesus. Jesus is God in the flesh. We are now a people of his name, and he inhabits our praise. When we declare the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his wonderful light, once we were not a people, but now we are the people of God, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. In this realm, man in the flesh has dominion on the earth, and a spirit needs to have agreement with a human. We look in the book of, uh, book of Acts and in the Gospels, there were spirits that inhabited people. And these people were God's covenanted people. Jesus came to his own, a people who had a relationship, a covenant with God Almighty, with Yahweh. He didn't come to nations and people that did not know him. He came to those who were people who had been circumcised on the eighth day, who were keeping the, the festivals and feasts, who were walking in the dietary laws, who were walking in obedience in the covenant and they had demons. I know today we, we hear a lot of people who are, who are Christians saying, well, a Christian cannot have a demon. Well, then how come an Israel Israelite could have a demon? It's a covenant that we have, but the covenant of uh, deals with our spirit. It deals with our uh, not our flesh. And in the flesh, demonic beings can can intervene and affect us. How do we know? Because we're, the Bible says you're not given to a spirit of fear. A spirit of fear. The Bible says that um, uh, uh, you're not um, that that these uh, these things that like like pride and lust and stubbornness is as idolatry. That uh, rebellion is as as witchcraft. Um, we see that there are spirits, there are emotions, there are thoughts and 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 feelings we can have that are not of God but of the devil. And praise helps to remove these things. Praise brings God amongst you because he inhabits the praises of his people. When I say hallelujah, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, Jesus is exalted. The presence of God comes among, around me. I can feel his presence. As disciples of Jesus, we are a priesthood. And that's something on, on this channel I want to always make clear. You know, a lot of us feel like we're, we're in the religion of Christianity, but God doesn't deal with religions. He deals with covenants. He deals with agreements, people who make a covenant with him. Abraham made a covenant. Moses made a covenant. David, he made a covenant with David. And God will keep his covenant. He made a covenant with you and I when we accepted Jesus as Lord, repented, and were baptized in the name of Jesus for the forgiveness of our sins. And we received the gift of the Holy Spirit. Just like the Israelites made a covenant on the mountain when they passed through the Red Sea, they made a covenant on the mountain. And God, they became the people of God, the people of Yahweh, Israel. And we are grafted into Israel, not Israel grafted into us. We are grafted into Israel here. The children of the spiritual kingdom of the Holy Spirit, we're grafted in as a priesthood, now offering sacrifices in heaven and not on earth, now mediating people through the spirit and not through a physical temple. And this is important for us to understand, otherwise we can't comprehend how we are priests we see religion we go to church we 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 sing in the choirs we but we can't understand how we're priests we have to see everything from a spiritual point of view because we are spiritual priests we are led by the spirit and so praise is how we bring our father close to us he inhabits the praises 
of his people. We have to praise him. Now, it's, it's, it's commanded, but God has said man has dominion on the earth. So he won't force us to do it. You know, interestingly enough, the Bible says that the children of this world are wiser than the children of light. You know, um, I'm looking for a scripture here. Uh, the, the children of this world are wiser than the children of light. Jesus was talking to his disciples, and he spoke about the 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 parable of the unjust steward, where a man who knew he was about to be fired uh, forgave all these debts of people so that when he was fired from his job, he could go into habitations and be taken care of. And Jesus in Luke chapter 16, verse 8 says, And the Lord commended the unjust steward because he had done wisely. For the children of this world, Jesus says, are in their generation wiser than the children of light. That there would be a battle, as we see in Genesis chapter 3, between the seed of the serpent and the seed of the woman, Israel. The seed of the woman who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus. We are the sheep of God. But in this generation... The children of this world seem wiser. Jesus said to be as shrewd as a serpent and as innocent as a dove. That we are to be led by, we should be led by the Holy Spirit in innocence, but we should be wise. Praise brings the Spirit. Praise brings a Spirit to you. And Yes, we can praise Yahweh Almighty, and that's who we should praise as disciples of Jesus. It brings legal ground for Yahweh to work in your life. He says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean on not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. When you trust in him, in all your ways acknowledge him, you give him praise. He will reveal his plans to you. He says in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, the other one was Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. But 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. Then I'll forgive their sin and will heal their land. See, when we seek his face, we seek him in prayer, supplication, praise, thanksgiving. These are what required. In fact, one of my favorite uh, psalms here, Psalms 100, and let's go to verse 4. Enter Yahweh's gates. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For Yahweh is good. The Lord is good. Father Yah is good. His loving kindness is everlasting and his faithfulness to all generations, but enter his gates, enter the gates of the kingdom. Family, you are in a spiritual kingdom. You are, when you believe in Jesus and are baptized into Jesus, you are in a kingdom. You can't see it, but it's present. It is the kingdom that you shall spend eternity in. Is the kingdom in Daniel that shall crush all other kingdoms, an eternal kingdom. And that kingdom shall come in, in physical form in the earth, in the new Jerusalem. But for right now, the kingdom is inside you, those of you who have the Holy Spirit. And in a kingdom, there are laws. In the kingdom of of Canada or Kingdom of America, Kingdom of Great Britain. You have rulers, you have laws, you have statutes. And in the spiritual kingdom, there are laws, statutes, and there's a great king. If we want to, where you are right now, you just not, the kingdom is within you, but you need to access the kingdom by going, going through the gates. And how do you go through the gates of the kingdom? Go through the walls. How do you go through? With thanksgiving. You're, you're walking yourself. You're, you know, you're, you're, you're going through your, your day. You're feeling stressed. Oh, I got to go to the kingdom. Thank you, dear God. 
Thank you for my life. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for keeping my family. Thank you for my health. Thank you for my eyes and my ears and my hands. Thank you. Thank you, dear Father, for the knowledge of Jesus Christ, how I've grown. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for, 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 for everlasting life. Thank you for revealing your, your purposes in my life. Thank you for all I've overcome in Christ. How you preserved my family through these times. How you restored my health. Thank you for the many answered prayers. Oh, can you feel yourself coming into the gates? Can you feel it? Thank you for the praise that I can give you. Glory, hallelujah, mighty God. Glory to the name of Jesus Christ who is worthy of all praise. Glory to him. Hallelujah. He is, God has given everything that he can give. He has provided the lamb for the sacrifice. He has provided the atonement for my sins. Glory. Hallelujah. I have new life in him. I shall live forever. Glory. Now we're entering into his court. And in the court, I can say, glory, hallelujah. Father, I ask in the name of Jesus, my King and my, my Messiah, in the name of the salvation you've provided, restore my health, protect my family, meet my needs, set that person free in the name of Jesus. Open the door for people to be saved. Break the bonds of the devil. Bring peace to this nation. We enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. See, there are protocols in God's kingdom, just like there are protocols in any kingdom. And the problem is my people perish for a lack of knowledge. So what we do is, you know, most times we we're under stress. God, help me. I have a test. Help me. I'm lonely. Help me. Or I'm sick. Help me. I'm going to die. Help me. And does God hear some of those prayers? Yes, he hears from afar. He heard the Israelites. Before. He heard the children of Abraham that were in Egypt. They cried out and he heard. He heard. But he restores us. We come near to him in praise and thanksgiving. When we come close to him, he hears our concerns and deals with the details of our lives as we meet those conditions. When you go to a gospel concert and you feel the change, when you feel that change, when you hear the, the, the worship, you know, many times I, I, um, some of us, you know, I remember being in worship and I thought we got to rile the people up. I'm going to sing songs, and they're going to get you know, emotional, and we're going to rile the people up, and then they're going to want to uh, be ready to, to, to move on with the service, and the, and the message will come. And I was very unspiritual in my thinking. It wasn't that we were riling people up. It's when we give thanks and we praise, we enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. We give honor and glory to him, and we are now in a, 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 a mindset, a thought to be able to hear his word, to trust in the Lord Yahweh with all our heart, with all our mind, and with all our understanding. We are changing all the thoughts and attitudes in our mind and bringing them under the supremacy of Christ. We are entering his gates and, and his, his courts, and now we're just surrendered, and we can hear the word. It's not that we're pepping people up. And I mentioned that the children of this world are wiser. You know, in the last few years, what was a, a journey for me was to come to real conviction that there are enemies of the church of Christ. And I knew there was a couple of people that probably did witchcraft and what have you. But now I realize that the structure and powers of this world are the enemies of God. And they worship Satan. And they create doorways for you and I to worship their God. And when you're singing those songs uh, of these artists and, 
you, you know, you don't know what they mean, a star this and star that, and, 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 and the lights, and you, you don't understand what you're saying, but you're singing, and you go to the concerts, and everyone's putting up their phones or their lighters, the, the swaying back and forth. They are worshiping. Oh, yes, they are. Oh, yes, they are. They are worshiping, and they are providing power. You know, God inhabits the praises of his people, but Satan inhabits the praises of his people as well. And some of us are praising superheroes that are representing God's. We're praising these these artists that represent Aphrodite and Diana and Isis. Oh yes, you are, and 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 people perish for lack of knowledge. You you're even even during this Christmas season. I'm not trying to get in your house, but when you put a tree with a star on the top and a, and a, and a, a a tree, and you're you're giving gifts. You know, in the Bible, people would give gifts as part of a covenant, and they would eat a meal during that time, just like your Christmas dinner. And stars, according to Revelations chapter one. Uh, the, the seven stars represent the seven angels that looked after the seven churches, the lampstands. So if a star can represent an angel and you have a star, what star is that on the top of your tree? That tree that represents, for those of you who don't know, a phallic symbol. What agreement are you making? Does the Bible, anywhere in the Bible, desire for you to do that? No. But the if you look at Jeremiah chapter 10, that might give you an idea of the idol that someone who decks a tree of gold and silver. Just take a look. You know, and the point I'm saying is people perish for lack of knowledge. We we go to these concerts and people praise the artists. We go to sports events and people are praising the players and praising the teams. They're singing with all their hearts. The national anthems come out, they sing with all their heart, and they sing with so much veracity. They paint themselves with colors and and, and sing and worship. They worship more than many of us worship our God, though we're purchased by the blood of Jesus. The people of the children of this world are preparing a kingdom, and they're pouring out a message to for people to do what they will. And they know that praise is how they can bring the courts on their side. Praise is how they can get the judgments in their favor. And we should be careful what we are praising. We should recognize that when we praise our God, we bring his justice. We bring his power. Oh, I pray that blesses you. You know, when you You are a royal priest of the holy nation. You are a kingdom of priests. Exodus chapter 19, verse 5 and 6. Israel is a kingdom of priests. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9 and 10. You are a royal priesthood. So you offer spiritual sacrifices. You offer the sacrifice of praise to God. And he inhabits the praise. Jesus is your sacrifice. And as you praise and give worship, he comes on the altar, which is the rock, which is Christ. And you are able to mediate through the sacrifice of praise. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in with all spiritual blessings where in heavenly places in Christ. Where? In heavenly places. Where? In heavenly places. The priests of Israel, the Levites, had no inheritance in the land. All their possessions were in the temple. Where it, All they, they owned was in the temple. You are now a priest. This is why the rich young ruler was called to give up everything he had and follow Jesus. He was to be a priest. And for us, all our treasures are in heavenly places, in the new Jerusalem. Jesus said, I go in my father's house. There are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. So when we walk in the spirit, we are walking in our inheritance in the spirit. Oh, hallelujah. 
It says here, blessed be the, the God and Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. When we want to take in the blessings that are in the heavens, we give praise. When we want to take in the blessings in the heavenly realms, we take in thanksgiving. Romans chapter 5, verse 1 to 2. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into the grace with which we stand, and we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. See, we have access into grace, into the blessings in the heavenly realms through our faith. And when you give thanks, you're exercising your faith. Because like Hebrews says, you believe that God exists and he rewards those that earnestly seek him. It's impossible to please God any other way. And so we give thanks. The thanks you give brings you into the kingdom. It allows you to access all the treasures laid up. The praise you give allows you to go before your father in heaven, clothed in Christ. With him high and lifted up, Jesus being the mediator who covers you so that you can approach and you can seek a ruling. You can seek counsel. Hebrews chapter 13, uh, 15 to 16. Through him, then, let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise that is the fruit of lips and give thanks to his name, Jesus. And do not neglect doing good and sharing, for with such practices, uh, such sacrifices, sorry, with such sacrifices, God is pleased. What, what kind of sacrifices? The sacrifice of praise. What kind of sacrifice? Continue to offer up a sacrifice of praise when you worship. So when you go to a church, you're not warming people up. You're offering your sacrifice on the altar to for God and for him to meet your needs. When you go to worship, he will respond and give you the word you need through the message, give you the word you need through the fellowship, give you the word. In your prayer times, when you're alone in your prayer closet and you give thanks and praise, he will hear and he honors his word. He will give you ruling in his court. He will bring you in. You'll feel the anointing of God. As you praise him, you feel the anointing. We are to praise God. We need to believe he exists and make an effort to thank him for what we, he has done for us and to praise him for what who he is and what he will continue to do. And as you do that, you will see power come to your life. Your prayers will be will be more will be answered. Many of us our prayers are not answered because we doubt, as James says. And the doubt is there because there is a demon of doubt. But that demon is removed when you enter in the gates of the kingdom. Ain't no demon coming in the kingdom of God. The demon moves when you give praise to the Most High and come into his court. But many of us are praying in spirits of rejection. We feel low and we pray in that spirit. We feel low, we feel fearful, we pray in that spirit. We feel angry, we pray in that spirit. And we are, in some ways, we are praying in the kingdom of darkness rather in the, than the kingdom of the true light of God Almighty. Does God hear us from far away? Yes. David said, if I'm in the depths of hell, you are there. Yes, he, he can hear you. But there's protocol. His priests offer acceptable sacrifices. His priests come into his presence, come into it at, at appointed times after certain conditions are met. They didn't wear their jeans up in the, in, in the holy place. I hope that makes sense. We access the kingdom of God through praise. Consider this. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16. Rejoice always. Have you ever wondered why we have to rejoice always? Because that's how you stay in the spirit. 
That's how you stay with the move of the Holy Spirit fresh in you when you're thankful. That's how you, you, you stay outside of the kingdom of darkness. When you are depressed, angry, stressed, fearful, you're not operating in the kingdom of God. But when you give thanks through all these circumstances, you stay in the kingdom. The Bible says in Luke chapter 17, verse 20, Jesus said, the kingdom of God is within you and you need to take every thought captive to remain in the spirit, not the flesh. We can come out of the kingdom when we walk in the flesh, fear, lust, pride. But if we give thanks, so you're tempted. You see someone attractive passing or, or a tempting thing to on your, comes on your, your, your phone. You're tempted. What do you do? Thank you, Father, for your mercy. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the, the, the grace that you've, you've given me. Thank you for my, my eyes, my ears, my life, my family. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you, Father. You are worthy of all praise. Praise be the name of Yahweh. Now you praise. Hallelujah, mighty God. Hallelujah. And you'll feel the presence. I feel it now. I feel the presence of our Father when I praise. The joy of the Lord is your strength, it says in Nehemiah. Philippians chapter 4, verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, rejoice. Rejoice when? Always. Well, how am I supposed to do that? Staying in thanksgiving. Just keep staying in thanksgiving. And keep giving praise. Is praise worship just singing? Well, Praise can be certainly singing, but it's also just exalting God. It's walking in that presence. You know, um, being a singer myself, being a, a, a musician, you know, many times I can perform. I've even performed in churches. You can be with musicians. You can be uh, very talented who can sing, pour out, but their hearts are not with God. They, they praise him with his lips but their hearts are far from God. They worship in vain. They worship in vain, the Bible says, Matthew chapter 15. We need to not examine the outward performance. We need to examine the inward work and look at the fruit of our hearts. It's in this place, the secret place of the Most High. It's when we abide in Jesus. How? By giving thanks for him. How? By praising him. Oh, hallelujah. When we abide in that secret place, then the words that God will inhabit that presence. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18 to 20. In everything give thanks. In what? In everything. In tough times? In everything. In good times? Everything. When you're about to worship? In everything. Giving a hard word? Everything. Correction? Everything, give in everything, give thanks for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophetic utterances. What, what's God's will for you? To give thanks. What's his will for you? To give thanks. Jesus said, not everyone will, who says to me, Lord, Lord, will inherit the kingdom of God, but he who does the will of my father, which is in heaven. What's his will? For you to give thanks. Do you give thanks? Some of us, we, we, we're like, well, we walk with the Lord and our face so long and heavy and we have a heavy countenance. We're not happy people. We're depressed people. People come around you, they feel depressed. But you say it's because you're just so spiritual. And I'll tell you, no, you're not so spiritual. You're inhabited by a spirit of rejection. And you are confusing the wrong kingdom. Because it's not through knowledge you get to the kingdom. It's by his spirit, not by might, not by power, not by Bible study, but by his spirit. And he, his spirit inhabits the praises of his people. Oh, hallelujah. Praise should be always on our lips. The kingdom of Judah, Judah means praise. Some of us, we, we walk around with such anger. We call ourselves Judah, and we don't praise him. We don't give thanks. What a shame. We despising our own birthright. You know, Isaiah chapter 61 is, is, is 
a scripture that Jesus preaches in Luke chapter 4. It's just the first sermon. He says, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me to bind the brokenhearted, to set the captives free. But he says something here in verse 3. To grant those who mourn in Zion, giving them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of the spirit of fainting. Or the garment of praise, it says in King James, instead of the... Uh, instead it's of a, uh, a spirit of heaviness. When you feel down and depressed, praise him. Put some gospel music on. Put some worship music on and sing along. <laughs> sing along. He's a way maker. He's a amazing grace. What a wonderful name. The name of Jesus is glory to the lamb. Sit, put some music on and you'll find the heaviness as you come out of your flesh and walk in the spirit. You're going to begin to see, feel the presence and feel the joy. Oh, hallelujah. Ecclesiastes chapter three, verse 12. I know that there is nothing better for mankind to do than to rejoice and to do good in one's lifetime than to rejoice and do good in one's lifetime. Moreover, that every man who eats and drinks sees good in all his labor. This is a gift from God. Nothing better to do in one's lifetime than to rejoice. Rejoice always. Give thanks. Brothers and sisters, this is something that we hear, but we don't understand that the kingdom of God, to do the work of ministry, to do the work of serving people, for, for to do to walk in Jesus' steps, who, you know, the Bible says was a man of sorrow, acquainted with sorrow. How for, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross. How through the joy set before him, he endured the cross. You're carrying your cross, but for the joy set before you, the joy of the Lord shall be your strength. Your strength shall be found in the rock, which is Christ Jesus, which is the rock of, of, of Israel. Colossians chapter 3, verse 15. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to, to which indeed you were called to one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ richly dwell within you with all wisdom, teaching, and admonishing one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with thanksgiving in your hearts to God, whatever you do, in word or in deed, do it in the name of G the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. Oh, family, praise. Jesus says, when you pray, Matthew chapter 6, verse 9, pray this way then, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. That's how you, st you start with praise. You start with worship. It will change how you think, family. You'll enter his gates of thanksgiving, his courts of praise now. As you are letting the Spirit lead you, uh, your, his presence is with you. He's inhabiting the praise of you, his saints. Now you can ask. And now you know what to ask. You're not just asking out of your anger. You're not just asking out of your depression, discouragement. And so many of us, that's how we pray. My people perish for a lack of knowledge. We're not doing it the way God wants us to. We feel like praise is just like a, a an, an additive in our walk. It is we're building. It's the will of God that we praise. He has called us out of darkness that we may declare the, the, the glory of him who called us out of darkness into his wonderful light. Last, I want to give a couple examples. Because we wrestle against flesh and blood. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers in high places. You wrestle against demonic beings. You wrestle against fallen angels. And you wrestle against witches and warlocks. You wrestle against Nephilim, giants, tyrants that are operating in satanic spirits. Some of you know this more. Some of you know this less. But your adversary is the devil. And you are not strong enough to beat your adversary. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 20. Israel is about to fight their enemy. And this is what happened. When the, the, they, rose, they rose early in the morning and went out to the wilderness of Tekoa. 
And when they went out, Jehoshaphat, the king, stood and said, Listen to me, O Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem. Put your trust in the Lord our your God, and you will be established. Put your trust in his prophets and succeed. When he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who sang to the Lord and those who praised him in holy attire as they went out before in front of the army and said, give thanks to the Lord. You hear me, family? They said, give thanks to the Lord. The, the, the singers went out in front of the army. Is that your battle plan? Give thanks to the Lord for his loving kindness is everlasting. When they began singing and praising, the Lord said, when they began singing and praising, Yahweh, Father Yah, set ambush, ambushes against the sons of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, who had come against Judah, so they were routed. For the sons of Ammon and Moab rose up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, destroying them completely. And when they had finished with the inhabitants of Mount Seir, they helped to destroy one another. When Judah came out to, to the lookout of the wilderness, they looked toward the multitude, and behold, there were corpses lying on the ground, and no one had escaped. You know, as it was in the beginning, so shall it be in the end. The victory of the kingdom of God will begin and end with praise. The victory that you want in your personal ministry will begin and end with praise. Hallelujah. The victory that you want for your family will begin and end with praise and thanksgiving. For your church will be praised because the praises of him goes out before you. It's not by might nor by power, but by his spirit. So go forth in praise. He is our rock, Psalm 18, uh, 2 to 3. The Lord is our rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, who is worthy to be praised, and I am saved from my enemies. This is a promise, family. Many of us, the biggest thing we need to do is to get out, put some gospel music on, and worship our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. To get on our knees and read some psalms and praise him with all our heart. It's for us to recount all the many ways he's answered our prayers. This is where we start our battle. For many of us, we just feel like we need to take matters in our own hands, and that's how we live. And we're living in defeat. We're perishing and we're blaming it on God when, in fact, we do not obey. Well, trust the Lord. Trust him with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Realize that our God, Psalm 22, 3, he inhabits the praises of his saints. He inhabits the praises of his people. Because Psalm 91 14 to 16, because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him, God says. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be, I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. This is what our Father says for those who praise him. You know, um, I think I'm going to close it with that. The Bible says in Psalms 40, Let all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. Let those who love your salvation say continually, The Lord is magnified. Praise our God. Give thanks. In everything give thanks. Stay in a state of gratitude and thanksgiving to God. You know, there's talks about gratitude and and all over, but people are not giving glory to God. They're just trying to stay in a state of gratitude. And even that is more powerful than many of us in Christ who stay in a state of depression, of, of, of fear, stoic, believing that these long faces show that we're tearing for God. In fact, instead, we should dwell in the house of God. And in his house, give him praise and allow him to go before us in all things. I pray this blesses you. 
I pray that you are seeing and knowing the faithfulness of our God. I pray that as you praise him, as you worship him, you will know the height and the depth and the width and the blessings of God Almighty. And, you know, with that said, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May he, his countenance fall upon you and give you peace. May you praise him and give thanks continually. Enter his gates of thanksgiving and his courts of praise and fulfill the will of God which that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Bless you, my family. Jesus is Lord. He loves you. He is coming back. We need to be ready for him by walking in his spirit, a spirit of thanksgiving and in praise. Bless you in Jesus' name.